The weights of domestic short-haired cats follow a bell-shaped distribution with an average weight of 9.0 pounds and a standard deviation of 1.1 pounds. Approximately what percent of these cats weigh between 7.9 pounds and 12.3 pounds? All right, so the first thing we want to do is try to determine what type of problem this is. And we have to do that by looking at key words, right? So I'm going to look at this phrase here, approximately. That's a word that we see often with empirical rule, right? But we need to have more than that, right? We also need to have the idea that we're looking for the percent of data that lies within some given interval. Well, sure enough, it says what percent will lie between this number and this number. So we have a strong indication already that this is the empirical rule. But before we jump to use empirical rule, we have to be very cautious and make sure we have justification that the data set follows a bell-shaped distribution. And sure enough, it states that. It says that the data follows a bell-shaped distribution. So this is empirical rule in sort of the most classic sense, right? So let's go ahead and try to solve this problem. Now our first step is to copy down the useful information. Let's grab the mean from the problem, the standard deviation, because we're going to need that, and then we're going to need the interval. So the mean for the data is 9.0 pounds, it says, and the standard deviation is 1.1 pounds. Now the interval they give us on the number line goes from 7.9 to 12.3. And that means we have 9 somewhere here on the number line, right? What I need to do is to determine how far away each of these values are, the limit values are, from the mean, right, in terms of standard deviation. So the easiest way to do this is actually to count it out. I'm going to illustrate this with our calculator. You can do this arithmetic in your head here pretty easily, but let's use the calculator just to make it simpler, right? So if you start with a lower limit, 7.9, how many times do you need to add the standard deviation of 1.1 to that lower limit of 7.9 to get 9.0? Well, let's just start by doing it one time and see where that takes us. If I add 1.1 to it, sure enough, I get the 9. So that means that this distance is only one standard deviation. In other words, this is one standard deviation, one sigma away, right? So this is one standard deviation away. Okay, now how far is it from 9 to 12.3 in terms of that standard deviations? Well, you might already see in your head that it's 3 away, but let's do it on the calculator. We'll take the 9.0, right? Oops, the 9.0 or just 9, right? And we're going to add to it. 1.1 and see where that takes us. Hmm. It only gives us brings us to 10.1, right? So it only brings us maybe about here, right? And then if I add to that another 1.1, of course it's going to give us to 11.2, right? Another standard deviation away, but still not where we need to be because we're only at 11.2 at that point. But if we add one more standard deviation of 1.1, that's the third time we've done this, we end up at 12.3. So what this tells us is that this goes one, two, three standard deviations away. So that's three standard deviations away. So our interval goes from negative one standard deviation to plus three standard deviations. Or in other words, it's one standard deviation below the mean and three standard deviations above the mean, right? Okay, so now that we have that, we have to now piece together the answer that we need, which is the approximate percentages. So we have to think about the rule that we know. We know, according to empirical rule, that plus or minus one standard deviation will capture 68% of the data, right? So 68% of the data is from negative one to positive one standard deviation. But since the curve is symmetric, each half of this area is 34%. Right, because the only way you'd have a total of 68 is to have 34 plus 34, since the curve is perfectly symmetric, right? Each half has to have the same amount of area. So that means that from here to here, one standard deviation must capture 34% of the data. Okay. So I know from here to here is 34%. But what about from the mean to a value that's three standard deviations above? We have a slightly different drawing for that one. Remember, in that case, we have the idea that from minus three standard deviations to plus three standard deviations from the mean, that captures a total amount of data of 99.7% of the data. However, we're only dealing with half of that, right? Because we're only talking about the upper half. 
Those we're talking about from here to here, right? This part of the curve. How much of that data, the 99.7, is in that space I just shaded? Well, of course, it's half the amount, right? So half of 99.7%. So what is half of that? Well, if you divide that, you'll get 49.85%, right? 49.85%. So that's what this portion is, 49.85%. Okay, and if you put it together, then you get the final answer. So it's going to be 49.85% plus 34%. Together, that will give you your solution. So it's simply 49.85 plus 34. And you get 83.85%. And that's it.